All right, the last thing I just want to cover is on this topic of authority. And let's just turn to Ephesians 5. The last thing I just want to cover is the fact that we are uh, an independent church and why we are an independent church and what it means to be independent. Uh, because you'll notice on our website, you know, it says we're a KJV only, soul winning, independent church. So what, what does it mean by independent and why, uh, why do we choose to be independent, make it a point to be independent? Well, in Ephesians 5, the Bible says here in verse 23, For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the saviour of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. And I'll just read the next verse so you ladies don't think I'm just stopping there for making a point. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. So we see there the two roles, the husband and wife, and um, their respective responsibilities. But we see there that the picture of the husband and the wife is the picture of Christ to the church. So Christ is the head of every church, just like Christ is the head of every family. So the, the husband answers to Christ, just like the pastor or the bishop will answer to Jesus Christ. And Christ inevitably is the head of this body. So the reason why we're an independent church is because we need to keep Christ as the head of this body and not another church the head of this body. Because if we were part of a denomination, now Christ is no longer the head of this church. If we were part of a denomination, it might be a board somewhere, it might be a you know, mission council somewhere, or it might be another church that is still deciding what happens in this church, and that should not be the case. Uh, we see as well also in Colossians 1, we'll just read from verse 13, "...who hath delivered us from the power of darkness, and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son." in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, uh, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. So every church should answer to Jesus Christ. And this is why we need to be independent, because we shouldn't be answering to another church. This church and its authority should be answering directly to Jesus Christ. You know, and submitting to the authority that is in a church, it's part of obeying Christ. Because some people will say, you know, well, you know, it's like, we want, to, we want Christ to be the head of our church and that's why we don't want a man to be in charge. But then, you know, part of Christ's plan and part of God's plan is that there is authority in the church. So part of Christ being the head of this church is that there is an authority in place and, and we have a responsibility as Christians to be in subject to that authority. Or within the bounds of this church, obviously, not in your personal life. Um, but see, so independent... It doesn't mean that you don't have any authority. It doesn't mean an independent church is just all, anything goes and everyone's equal here in authority. Independent just means that we, are, we govern ourselves. It means that we're not governed by people that are outside of this assembly here. And you know, we talked about what a church was as opposed to the body of Christ. And you know, I, I think this is the main reason why people really adamantly oppose the teaching of a universal church. Because think about it, if there is authority set in the church, you know, and the church can be rightly called the body, but it's the congregation of people that has the authority. Well, if there is a universal church, therefore the authority in the church should have authority over everybody, right? Because if we're all part of this one church, then they have authority. No, because they don't have authority in the body of Christ. I have authority in this church, which is this gathering of believers here. And that's why this, this idea of a universal church can, can lead you astray, because if we're all part of one church, then does that mean authority in the church has authority over different churches? And that's why you know, a lot of Protestant churches and Catholic churches, they, they have this doctrine of the universal church, and that's why they can justify controlling multiple churches and, and having a denomination, which I don't believe is right. 
All right, 1 Corinthians 12. For as the body is one and hath many members, and all the members of that one body, being many are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. If the foot shall say, I am not of the hand, I, am I, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the ear shall say, because I am not the eye, am, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If the whole body were hearing, where were the smelling? But now hath God set the members, every one of them, in the body, as it hath pleased him. And if they were all one member, where were the body? But now are they many members, but yet one body. And the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of thee. Nay, but much more those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary. And those members of the body which we think to be less honourable, upon these we bestow more abundant honour, and our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness. I personally think that's talking about things like maybe your heart and things like that that look really weird, but um, they're very important. For our comely parts have no need, but God hath tempered the body together, having given more abundant honour to that part which lacked, that there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another. And whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it, or one member be honoured, all the members rejoice with it. Now ye are the body of Christ, and members in particular. And then it goes on to talk about the authority which we covered last week. So, you know, we read here that, you know, we as the believers are like the body, are, are the body of Jesus Christ, and we should be treated like such. So, you know, the body parts, because the church is like a section of that body, isn't it? Because when the body gathers together, it makes a church. So, Every part of the body answers to the head, doesn't it? The head decides what the body does. But you see, another body part shouldn't be telling another body part what to do. So this is why churches should be independent, because my hand shouldn't be in authority over the foot, right? The head is the authority, and the head is deciding what the hand and foot does. So that's why you know every church should answer to the head, which is Jesus Christ. And it means that if one church goes bad, it doesn't pull every church down with it. Because when churches are all yoked together and they all have a common interest um, and common financial interest as well, sometimes when one part goes down, it drags every church down with it. So that's one reason why you'd want to be independent. But just because we're independent, it doesn't mean churches can't work together. I mean, often we think of this passage as members within a church body. But we can think of it as different churches as well. Like, you know, just because we differ with other churches, it doesn't mean we can't work together on certain things. We all play a part in the big picture. We also see here in this passage that, you know, all parts are necessary. Just because a part may be more uncomely than another, it doesn't mean that it's not needful. Uh, all parts are necessary and all parts of the body play their part. And, I, I, and us... You, you know, you as church members of this body, you know, you want to take that upon yourself because you need to realize that you play a part in this body. And when, you know, when you're missing from this body, you know, something is missing. So we need to take ownership there and realize that, you know, we do affect the body of Christ. You know, when something is missing, uh, the body doesn't function properly. When there are issues between members, it hurts the whole body. So no man is an island or no woman is an island in the body of Christ. You know, what you do affects other people and your example will affect other people. You know what? If you're not soul winning, you know, you're going to discourage others from soul winning. And the more people we don't have soul winning, the more comfortable other people are going to get not going soul winning. So, you know, we want to keep this church soul winning. We want to keep this church, you know, on the right path. We want to keep worldliness out of this church. So, you know, if you come to church and you're just talking about, you know, worldly stuff and, you know, you have worldly interests and things like that, you know, that's going to affect other people. But on the same token, if you're on fire for God, if you're on fire for the truth, if you're on fire for soul winning, that's going to encourage other people. So it can be a positive and a negative difference that you make. You know, Jesus talked about he that is not with me is against me and he that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad. So what you want to note is that there is no neutral position. If you're walking in the flesh, you're doing harm to the body of Christ. If you're walking in the spirit, you're doing good to the body of Christ. So it's in our best interest that we all strive to walk in the spirit as much as we can. 
So really ask yourself that question, you know, does my life glorify God? You know, is my life, when I look at my life, is it drawing people closer to God? Is it encouraging people to do more for God? Is it encouraging people to, you know, uh, get into the Bible and to study the Word of God? Or is my life pushing people away from God? Is my life distracting people from the Word of God? Is my life discouraging people from what's doing, doing the right thing? Think about that question.